Hey everyone, it's Joe Glines here from the Automator with Isaiah's, and then uh, Jean Alon from Quick Access Pop Up is going to walk us through. We've had some requests on the NO setup tool, which is a really great tool if you want to have a GUI that's really friendly for the users that are installing your programs on where they're going to put their files and how they're going to customize you and do stuff. So it's a very flexible, well documented, good community tool. And so we're going to walk through how to use the tool. Um, and it's been a while since Jean has actually configured it, but um, he's going to give us a little tutorial here. So thank you, Sean. Yeah, my pleasure. Hi, 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 hi Joe. Um, yes, it, this tool is also good to give you as developer the control on how the software will be installed, which file will be in which folder, uh, which value in a Nini file, things like that. So it's, it's good both for, for the user because it's easy to install a software and for you because it's a safer installation when you use that tool compared to distributing a portable software that you could put in a zip file, but then you let the user do some changes eventually to your installation and it may not work at some, at some point. Right. That's why when I was developing Quick Access Pop-Up, at first it was a portable software, but then just to make it safer uh, to distribute on the way it was installed, I started using uh, Inno Setup, one of the few tools that are available for free and that are very popular with a good community community to to help you if you have questions for about the various options in the software. Yeah. So what I propose to show you first, I'll just share a little table of content here. So uh, Joe, we could put this information in the video description. So the, the link to the the, the home page of you know, setup where you can download it and where you can get help. Well, and what we'll sh we will see is first a simple example, uh, just to get the basics, then something that I would call intermediate, where it gives you more things that you will probably need installing your software. And in the end, we could just walk through the uh, installation file for a quick access pop-up, uh, where uh, some more advanced things uh, has been developed over the years. I started using it, I think maybe seven or eight years ago. I do not use this tool every day because it's not something you need to use every day. So there may be things that I don't know or just forgot. So at some point, depending on what you are, your questions or, or needs, we could go to the help file, maybe just to find the answer, or you could do some additional research after the, the video. So are we good to start with the simple example? Yeah, sure. When you install quick, uh, when you install uh, Inno Setup, it uh, install a, a program which is in fact an editor. So I'll just start it that way here. So Inno Setup compiler, which is a text editor where you compile a script, a text file that will control how your program will be installed, and you have various example file and here the files that you used previously. So we will just open the example one here. There's um, a menu bar where you can uh, create a new file, open, save, but this button here is the one you will use to compile your program. So to create an executable file that will set up your program, mm -hmm. you have this button here that will run the script as it is here, but I prefer me to compile it and then install testing it using the real compiled file mm -hmm. and a few other options that are maybe less that I don't don't use. So at the basics first, what you have to do is to set up your installation. So to give some information like the application name, in this example, my program is version, um, the default directory name. So auto PF, I'm not sure what it is. I think it's program files. Yes, it's automatic program files. So the program file folder under your C drive probably could be elsewhere. And will it be the, the 86 uh, or the regular it, it will be yeah. decided automatically if you have this, uh, this is here a constant that will mm -hmm. be replaced by the folder of your program files. Default group name a group is a, a group of icons that will be displayed in your start menu. Okay. So these are all groups. So there will be a group for our program. Mm -hmm. So that's we have first as a setup. Uh, just before that, 
I defined a few variables. So you can define variables just to reuse this information later in your script. And mm -hmm. if you need to change it, you will only have to change it once, once. here. It will mm -hmm. be protected elsewhere. Can so my it? folder for my distribution files in, in my O drive, in a folder called distribution file that can, can show you here. So that's this folder here. It contains a license text, an executable file, so a, comp a compile program. So uh, InnoSetup will not compile your, um, your program using AHK to EXE. You have to do it before. Uh, you have to sign it before if you, have, if you want your program to be signed. But this, the signature could also be integrated inside InnoSetup. But for now, we just have a regular auto at key script compiled or transform to an executable file. An icon here, which is a yellow star and a readme file. Okay, so that's and what- So, so these are the files that are gonna be then uh, copied over to another location, right? So this is the, yeah. the final pro be, technically. Yeah, they will be packed inside the setup file, the setup executable and unpack if you wish and, and place in the various folder okay. where they need to be uh, on the user's account system. Okay. So that's this uh, distribution file. And my build directory is where I will output mm. the result of our compile. So I will just delete the one that we had before. Uh, there is one running here. Let me just close this. OK. So that's where will be uh, created the setup file that will be that I can send to the users who want to install the, the program. So the first one was read from this location, and this is where yeah. you're going to okay. dump the setup file, zoom right? Yeah, exactly. Can you zoom in? Yeah. OK, there we go. There we go. Yes, and it's uh, so here uh, to create variable, you use the define keyword, then the name of the variable. There is no equal or anything like that. You just follow it with the value that you want in the variable between oh. double yeah, definitely cannot use an equal sign because it's being read below as an any file, so it would yeah. <laughs> it would yeah. clash with that. So, so that's the setup section. Now, after that, you have the files section. So that's where you define which files will be included in your setup program, and you have to say in which folder it will it is. So it is in my distribution file, which is this folder here. Mm -hmm. And the name of my file is myprogram.exe. And the destination for this uh, file, when it will be installed on the user system, will be in the application directory, which is by default um, the, the C program files backslash my program backslash. So you will see whatever I define it, uh, whatever I, I defined as default, their name. Yeah, then in is fact, that I defined it here. Right, OK. Okay, that's the program file. PF is for program file automatic yeah. because there are two and one of the two will be selected mm -hmm. and it will be my program. But when, when I uh, refer to app in this instance, I'm referring to that particular directory over there, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And the second file that will be installed in this basic example is the readme file in the mm -hmm. same folder. Uh, is readme, why? I'm not sure it was there when i did it uh not sure it's the reason so that this flag, it, but there's it a lot actually of flags, flags the file in a specific way okay yeah but the file will don't i don't think the file will be maybe the side the file will be marked as read only let's check that after the installation and then there's the icons the icons are the icons that appear inside the groups here so it's not it's not the icon of the file as as we could think it's the icons that will be displayed in the start menu here. Okay? All right. Review that in a second. So the icon will be in a group. The group is one of the section of the start menu. Uh, you see, uh, as Joe, I have the my start menu on the right side. You will have it probably on the bottom left here, but it's the same, same features. So a group that will be named my program. My program. The name of the group is defined here, mm -hmm. and under that there will be the file my program exe as an icon that will be 
that will, when you click the icon, it will execute this program. So let's. So, so instead of icons, this is kind of like shortcuts that will show up on the yeah, start, start menu. menu items. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the yeah, name okay. they have. Yeah. They, they said the, the word icons, but it is not referring to icons themselves. It's actually the, the shortcuts. Yeah. Okay. The only icon is the one that you see here. Right. So yeah. The way they call it, probably. The... Okay. And so now that I have this script here, I will just run it by clicking here the compile button. And you will see that it will be very quick. You see the status here, and then it's done. It took one second point. 047 seconds and it's done. So let's review this. If we go in my build folder, I have a file here called mysetup.exe. That's the default name because I didn't set a name, but, but I, we, we can set a name for the setup file. It's better to do that. But just mm -hmm. for this example, here is the default name. And when we run it, we'll, we'll see the, the interface of the setup program. First, it will ask you if you want to install the program. And uh, here, you know, you see my uh, my. You cannot uh, see that. This is this is the window window. This is the window uh, checking for permissions, right? We cannot see yeah. that. And if it is yellow, it is because the software is not signed, so there's no certificate. So you mm -hmm. have to be sure that you take it from a safe source. If it's blue, it's a, a file that has been signed, so it's safer to install this file when they are signed with a certificate. So after you approve, you give the right to install the program. So you have here the interface of the, the installer. First, the user has the choice of where the program will be installed. So um, by oh, default- So, so even though, file. so, okay. So even though we set it up in the, in the setup folder, like in the setup file, it doesn't mean that it's going to be installed there. It's just that that's what it's going to show up first. That's the default. Now you can actually change it to whatever you want. Yeah. All yeah. right. Okay. So that we can change it because some users will have this on their their B drive or their E yeah, drive, yeah, exactly. they yes. change, or they can have in different different places. So they have the choice to do it. So next, they will have to the name of the yeah. Um, that's on the start menu just, folder. That's a start menu. So that's the name of the, the group that we will have in the right. start menu in my program. Then there's a summary. But I just realized that this software, oh yeah, there was no license here. Okay, there, there will be, like, the second example, there will be a, li a license approval that will be requested. It's not the case with this simple example. So that's all what we have to, the user will have to do just to select his folder to confirm that you want to install it that way and click install, and it will be installed in a few seconds. And at the end, there's a confirmation where the user can view the readme file. I think that's the point. Uh, if you don't have it flagged as a readme file, this particular window might not show up, right? It will not uh, tell you to yeah, open it. Or if you don't give the readme file path, it will not uh -huh. show up. It will not show up in there, okay. And when you click finish, you if we- You have the, the optional. Click, it will be open, so it, it's yeah. open in the default text file okay. reader. So that's this example. And now this software has been installed. So you see it here in the recently added uh, section, you see my programs, or if we go under M, you will see the group here, my, my program. program with this with icon. One, my with program. one icon that you are. And when I start it, it will display hello world, which because, is probably the yeah. first <laughs> application you developed. Many years ago. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Okay. So that's that's that simple for the basics. So I, what we can and if we just go to my checklist here, in this simple example, we've seen that we have constants, so values mm -hmm. that we can use, and there's a help file and, and reference documentation with, for all the, the 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 constant that we can use. There's define where you can create variables, and we've seen three sections: setup, files, and icons to define what will be installed in, in which way. Right. In the second example, we'll see a little more features. So let's close this one and open the example two. So um, what's, so we have here this, the, some of the basic information we had before. There's also uh, something that I will just show here that if 
you have you want you can use in the very environmental variables. variable with this function here uh, of course when you do that you have to have something set up in your environment which is not the case for this demonstration but just to show you that you can you could retrieve some information from the environment Mm -hmm. um, what else? I'm defining here the application ver version as uh, to be used in the file names, with, so with underscores, and my application version in the text format, if you wish, with V and dot, so it can be used in different places in these two formats. I added the application URL and the application executable name, so the name of the, of the program. Right, so this is something that you didn't do the last time, so that's the yeah, reason why it chose that. Right, okay. And so we can use these value here in the setup, so my application version, application version name, which is the name and the version, uh, the publisher URL, which is your URL that you could put here, um southern other things were already there before mm -hmm. here the the output directory so where it will be saved and the output base file name so the file name of the setup file so it will be my program dash the version number dash setup mm -hmm. dot exe that will be added when it will be created mm -hmm. i mentioned here a setup icon file so the star icon that we will uh, see in the installer and the license file that will be presented to the user that he will have to approve before installing the software. So it's a file, all you have to do is to put this file in your distribution file here. So this short file will be included in the installer. Uh, there's a compression- uh, Algorithm, yeah. Yeah, uh, I just used it, so never had issue with that and solid compression not sure what it is but i just use it as it is suggested by mm -hmm. uh, by you know setup then we have here the same two files yep. and now i added a task here so a task is an action that you um, want to give the user the choice to execute or not so there will be a step in the installation where the user will be will have the choice to check or uncheck various tasks that you can define. Mm -hmm. So the one that I defined here is to create a start menu folder. Uh, so that's it. We did it in the first example, but the user didn't have the choice. There was a- uh, Oh, right. Yeah, it, it was created for them. You, you couldn't actually uh, decide whether or not to do yeah. that. Yeah. You will be able to decide. We have a few more icons. So here, my program yeah. will be named my program dash two. Um, there will be a link to the website in my in my start menu, and an, an uninstall option also in okay. the, this menu. I create a directory uh, under common app data, which is where if you you know that your when your system could have multiple users, each user have their own files in their app data mm -hmm. user app data, yeah. but there's also a common app data folder yeah. where an application can store information that will be available for all users of this of this system. So that's where I'm creating a, a folder. You could also create a folder in users folders uh, if you if you need it. But there's also things that you can let to your application to do the, to do it. So there, are, you know, there are things that can be done by the installer, and there are things that can be done by your application itself when it's, it gets more information about what the user wants or what is the, the specification of the, of the of the system. But here it will create this, and in this this folder we will create an ini file, and here we define what will be the content of one or more any file. So in the any file that will be named my program uh, folder mm -hmm. okay, under common application data, I can show you this folder. That is this folder here named program data. That is in Windows 10, you have this program data 10. folder. Yeah, yeah, yeah but in other, in other yeah. is in, yeah. So here there will be a folder named my program that will be added after the installation. Mm -hmm. And it will contain a, an ini file that will be myprogram.ini. 
And in the global section, it will include uh, a key that is named language code that could be English or French or ES, okay, or Spanish, depending on which language will be selected by the user when he does the installation, mm. okay? So I set up three languages. We will see with quick access pop-up, there are 10 languages that are, and it will also change the interface of the installer when you select mm. a language here. So we'll try English first, then we can retry again with the Spanish version. Run is a section that will determine what is what will be executed after the installation. So after the installation, the user will be able to start the program and uh, also to uh, open read, our web the readme file. We've seen the readme file in the first, it, it, was, it was there by default. But mm -hmm. here we are adding two other options. The last one being to send some money to a freeware developer like me or like you. Uh, so there's a link to PayPal. It's an option that you can give the user uh, when he does the installation. Here we define the languages. So the three languages that we used here were parameters. So saying that this command, this line here will be executed only if the, the user selected the language English or French or Spanish. These languages are defined here. So we have the name of the language and the message file, which is the, 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 the file containing the, the language, the text uh, for this language. So there's one by default, which is English. And we can also have other file, ISL files that are under the compiler um, data folder. All right. Okay. And finally, uh, here for my PayPal link here, I have a, desc um, a description, which is the text that will appear in the, uh, in the installer that can also be translated. And, but to, to have these text, uh, these text translated, we have to use what is called a custom language uh, entry, which is uh, the English or the original text, help me pay expenses for making this app. And then I can have the translation for French oh, right. and the translation for Spanish that I hope it's okay because I just get got it. <laughs> yeah, this one is good. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it may not be one. <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> but this one's perfect. good. Right. <laughs> Same thing to save on the second line. We'll see that it can be paid with PayPal or credit card. So it's also translated. I would have thought that these translations would have been in the ISL file. No, because uh, it's not everybody that will want to say PayPal or credit card. So it's something that is more specific to my situation here. So it's your installation. So right no, but 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 oh, sorry. So the French.isl is not a file that you created yourself. No, it exists. You download oh, right. it. There oh, are right. hundreds okay. of language files. I understand. So those, some those... are approved. Some uh -huh. are validated by the developers or by the community. Some others are on um, for approval, if you wish, but you can still use them. They may just yeah. be not as uh, perfect as the order. So do you, yeah, yeah, I understand there, what you mean. Now, all yeah. the basic is there. Here is just what, what is called custom, custom messages. messages. Right. Things okay. for you. So, okay. so, so those ISL are just for the uh, interface of the setup, right? Yeah. Okay. The common language that you will find right. in the installer. Yeah. Right. So we've seen all that. So let's see how it will uh, work. But first, I will just uninstall the first version, the first program, uh, yeah. Sort it by installation date. So that's the program that we installed at first. So I, to uninstall it, because there is no uninstall menu item in the start menu, right. you, you have, have to, to go come, in yeah. my parameters, in my settings here to uninstall it and it's done are you sure yes now it's done so we can start from for a fresh install using this file so i will compile it and if i go in my build folder this is my second installer that we just built. It has the icon that we defined. It has the name, the setup file name that we defined with the version number. Right. And now I can double click it to start it. There's the approval screen. 
And so the first thing now is the language. By default, it says French probably because it detected that I have a French Windows, but you will probably see English or Spanish uh, depending on your version of uh, Windows. So we'll do it in English first. Here is the license, so I can review the license. All right. If so, I so, disagree, okay. so it actually just copies the text in there. Yeah, from that's the, the file. text file okay. that we have. Right. Yeah, 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 I remember. And and how yeah. was that link created? Oh, you just put it there. Okay, it's just it's yeah. just a normal. So there's a the link is uh, here. The link is only the fact that I mentioned this here. Uh huh. There we go. Okay, it will be automatically processed because you give. A license file, right? So it's going to read that and put it in that window. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. So the user can refuse and just stop. It won't be able to install. To to click next, he has to accept. Now we can click next. He select the folder. He select the name of the, the group startup the folder. folder. And does he want yes or no to create the startup? folder here so you could uncheck that if you don't want the user don't want to have this in this menu and you want to create its own uh, uh, link file or shortcut so it's up to the user and finally it there's a summary and now it will install the software well, this time we have uh, there's, more options right and now we have we have the readme uh, option that we had before launch my program that we added and help pay for my expenses. So if the user clicks here, it will also open the, the URL that has been right. passed for this PayPal. So let's try with the three options here. So we click finish. So it opens the PayPal link. It opened the readme text file and mm -hmm. it launches the program, which is much small in English because we selected <laughs> yeah, English. So it I did yeah. something in my script that will show hello world in the language that you selected in the- uh, Oh, right, okay, I get it. And I'll just show you what, what make this work. So, so let's try it again, just to, first let's try to uninstall the software. Uh, oops, cancel. Here, well, I don't like this scroll bar. So under M, there's my program here. So in addition to the my program itself, there's also the link to my website or mm -hmm. Joe's website in this example and the uninstall icon. So if I click uninstall, it will ask me to confirm that I want to remove everything that has been installed by the software. In fact, it removes everything except the ini file. Uh, and you could remove also the ini file if you wish, but me, I prefer to, what is user data, not to remove yeah, it, let I know. To remove yeah. it. Okay. better practice in, in my view, at least for the kind of application I develop. So I just uninstall. So we can start again with the same file here, uh, not this one, here under build. So this installer file, and now we will select the Spanish language. So here we have the language around the, the license is in Spanish. I could have three versions of the license file, mm -hmm. but I didn't. So it's all in English here. Uh, accepto el acuerdo. <laughs> acuerdo. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And okay, next, next. The right. same options. The only difference is the text that is in Spanish. Yeah. And of course, you have to go back here. This text has not been translated, but it could be translated. Okay, just a matter mm -hmm. of a little more work. And the summary and the installation. And now I will just execute the program. And you will see that the program is now in Spanish. It's now in Spanish, right? <laughs> so how is it done? What we have here in the any file that is created we have here this variable that is read by the script. So your if script, I look at so your script the then, source file, yeah. uh, I'll open it just with. So right. it reads the ini file in the folder where the information language code was mentioned. By default, it's English. But if it is ES for Spanish, it will 
So yep. this, if it's French, it will say bonjour. And in English or by default, it will say hello world and then display. So that's the way you can have some communication of information from the installer to okay. your program right. by using an any file. file right. You could also use the registry, Windows registry or any text file also that could be used to, to do awesome. that. So what we have here, we have under the programs, we have this folder here that contains the executable. So it, it's under uh, program files x86 in French here, displayed in French. The readme file, the, un the uninstaller. Uh, under the, the startup menu, menu démarré is startup menu. So we have programs and here we have my program, which contains the, the, the three the short shortcuts mm -hmm. to run the program, to open Joe's websites, which is the one I entered in the ini file and to uninstall the program. And it is written in Spanish because we selected. <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> Hello. Um, so that's, and finally, in under program data, where you have files that are available to all users of your system, there is a my program folder with this ini file containing the language code that we created. So that's are the various pieces that are working together to create this a little more uh, flexible uh, right. installation. So we've seen, whoops, um, that we can add more information in the setup. We can create tasks to give the user the choice to do something or not. We added two items to the startup menu, created the directory in the file run where we offer to the user what to run at the end of the installation and we created languages and have constant constant message being translated for these um, awesome messages right so that's it um, what we could do now is just take a look at a real life example which is the the quick access pop-up uh, setup file Unless you have questions before you go that we go into that. Well, um, for now, I think the the main idea is really simple, right? So it is very easy to follow up. I did have the question: Can you create that file that you're opening right now, this ISS file, in any editor, or it has to be in their own editor? In any editor. Mm -hmm. And you could launch you could the, the, the compilation from right. the batch file, if you wish. All right. So all my setup is done using batch files that will uh, call AHK to EXE to compile mm -hmm. the file, that will call the signature uh, of the file. And when all the files are ready, to call the compiler to, to create the setup file. Mm -hmm. So all of this can be done from command lines or batch files or- uh, So you're or not actually editor. tied to that particular editor per no. se. The only uh, advantage of using it is the are the buttons that you have. Yeah, exactly. The menu bar and the options. And there's a few things that you could, uh, let me just open it here. Under tools, you can generate a GUI that will be the unique identifier for your program. Uh, something that you could or could also do elsewhere. There's a lot of ways to create GUIs, but it's, it's it's convenient to have this there. You can configure your signature tool, so giving it where is your certificate file. Not sure if you're sharing your screen though. Oh, excuse me. Mm -hmm. Okay, I was mentioning that you can create a GUI a GUI here, so a unique identifier for your file for your program uh -huh, okay. uh, and uh, configure a signature uh, location. So where is this, the certificate that will be used to sign your software? So all this can also be uh, used inside and then various commands that are also available here to compile right, okay. or stop compilation or just run your script without having to compile it. Uh, okay. But it's up to you. And I think there's something in, uh, included in, in VS Code, uh, you know, setup. I've seen somewhere that there was something maybe, I'm not sure if it's VS Code or Visual Studio Editor. I'm there's a various. Yeah, there's a little Microsoft bit of different. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so some one of them or some of them include yeah. the you know setup uh, features. 
All right. So I, okay, I, so uh, yes, just to complete what we can see in the um, in the, the quick access pop up example is that I'm using the registry command or section to create registry entries in Windows registry. Uh, it is used in my case to create context menu entries and also to register the application in Windows so that you could do things like uh, if the user quiz type quick access pop up without giving the path, it will be automatically found because it's been registered mm -hmm. in the it's Windows the application yeah. without having no without having to use the path. In addition to the path, oh. if you register your application in Windows, it will be found just oh, by typing the file name without yeah, exe yeah. without the path. Right, Similar okay. to using path if you wish. All right. Uh, and code which allows you to define custom function in Pascal. I don't know if you ever program in Pascal. Ever. I don't know, Joe, you're older. Something I use. I actually AC. was signed up for a class for it uh, in my junior college, and then I, I didn't finish it. But yeah, uh -huh. I, I did sign up. So for that's it. one of the first structured language. Before that, it was basic with go yeah, tools yeah. and things like that. And it, it introduced the, the notion <laughs> of functions. So I don't know where why they are using this language, probably the preference of the developers. And, and that's what is available to add custom features to um, to the, the pro the installer program so that's the quick access pop-up example um so you were getting some things from the environment in this particular yeah, case i'm getting the the date the today's date in in the in a given format in mm -hmm. fact i'm getting only the year because i want to write copyright from 2013 to this year and this year is can change over time and I don't have to think every January 1st to change this file. <laughs> so it's not <laughs> by this yeah. command. Um, custom message, that's the same thing we've seen. Set up here, there's the app ID. So I just replaced it with some Z's, but that's the GUI that will identify your program uh, uniquely among every other installation or program that would be installed uh, in the world. Um, what else? architecture it actually yeah, seems to uh, you could actually go ahead and say by default it's 64 bit user can mm -hmm. also install 32 bit so uh, there are parameters that we will see in the file section here where yeah. the file name will include 64 or 32 and it mm -hmm. will be installed only if the flag 64 bit is present so it's a flag that will say to Inno setup, it's a flag that Inno setup will discover by looking at the environment. And if it is a 64 bit machine, it will execute this line here. And if it is a 32 bit machine, it will ex execute the previous line. So let's return at the beginning. So only one of these two files will be installed on the system, depending on the architecture of the system. Um, what else? Uh, Okay, the registry section. So language is the same thing we've seen, but with some more languages, some more files. Uh, for example, if you use SQLite in your program, you will have to install two files, the SQLite DLL and SQLite mm -hmm. DEF. Oh, yeah, and so there are two the versions of these. Yeah. Yeah, and there's one for 32 bits and one for 64. Yep. It's it's one of the things that can cause nightmare, support nightmare using say uh, your database doesn't work or your application uh, doesn't work, yeah. but it's just because the user didn't install the correct uh, SQL file uh, for the, the its machine. So yeah. all this is taken care of automatically by using these flags here mm -hmm. that will. Uh, decide if it is installed in one version or the other. I, I'm actually kind of surprised that you needed to kind of like give the defi the definition file because that is, it seems to me that you need it for QAP, right? But yeah, usually- for, At least for QAP and I'm using it also another software. Uh -huh. It has to be there for, for the, the SQL uh, component to be, uh, to be, to work with your auto key script. Really? Yeah. I yeah. I use I, I use SQL but without the definition file. But it is interesting okay. because the uh, definition file is a list of the functions that you have available. Yeah, but it has to match. Yeah, it has to match the one that you have. They have, they have to be the same business, but right, my yeah. experience. Yeah. 
Uh, and then you have your e section, yeah, exactly. Yeah, with more languages, but that's the only difference. Icons is quite the same. And then you have the registry section. Mm -hmm. So the first items are to register the application in Windows. So in the software, Microsoft Windows current version app path, here you will see All that right. your application, quick access pop-up, for example, is in this in particular this location. location. Right. So it's equivalent to added your folder to the path variable, but you don't have to go adding it there because it will be found here because it is available in this section of the registry. And here is um, oh, just something I added to make sure that uh, the software was correctly uh, removed when you uninstall the software. I'm not sure. We, I don't remember exactly when, why this was added. And, and the remaining here section of the registry is to create um, um, context menu entries. For example, if you right click here, you have a quick access pop-up icon to say, add this file to your quick access pop-up menu right. that will automatically open quick access pop-up and add the program Actually, or the text, the document that you selected. This is a very interesting thing. We do have a question on that, but after the after we finish, yeah, we'll okay, we'll do another because this is that. a very interesting <laughs> concept. Yeah. So you define all all these um, registry keys will create the the, the various icons mm -hmm. that you can have in the context menu, mm -hmm. and there are different ones. For example, if I go to the desktop and I just left click on the desktop, I will have the the show quick access pop up menu. Right, exactly. Okay. Um, so back to the file. And finally, uh, you have this code, code section, section where you create functions. And the first one I use is uh, I, I release very frequently new version of quick access pop-up, which is good because I, I added feature and the user received more features. But user have to reinstall the application every time I release a version. It can be once a month, maybe at some point it was made even more frequent than that. Now I'm more quiet. <laughs> but um, some users say it's good to have updates, but it's bad to have to click next, 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 next every time we every install. We have time, 10 yeah. next to click. Or so I try to reduce the the number of clicks. So if the users the user already installed the software. He already accepted the license and he already accepted to have the, the task that created the group here. Mm -hmm. So this function here is checking if the current page that is going to be open is the license page or the select task page. Then if the software has already been installed, so that's a command that I found on the, the forum of you know, setup, mm -hmm. this says that there is a previous application or, or a pre previous mm -hmm. version of your application already installed, then it will return false uh, that will, or true, or yeah, it will return true so that it says that we will skip this page here, mm -hmm. else it will return false. So that's something that you can copy and paste from the forum once you found that. Right. And there's a few other things that I don't remember exactly why. Oh yeah, this one is, do I want to execute the, um, to install the context menu? So there could be an option just for user that would not want to have the setup menu to be installed. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's a kind of thing. And then it is Pascal language here. It looks a little bit like uh, auto -hotkey, hotkey. <laughs> yeah, but, this is uh, kind of like a mix of auto hotkey and, and yeah. Python. But you need to have begin and end, right, even exactly. if there's only one command. Oh, and you man. need to have the semicolon at the end of every line. Every single line, every yeah. Line, uh, every line when there's a second line. <laughs> <laughs> it's really annoying, yeah. Uh, no, not this one. Yeah. No. Anyway, so that's uh, another language to, to learn. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so... But you can find uh, examples on the website, and uh, I can just take a look at the yeah, so I would probably infer, I would probably infer that uh, this program was written in Pascal, probably. I, I assume, yes. So there's the main L file and also here the setup preprocessor 
there's a lot of stuff there, but that's where you will find the define command that we use at the top here. You're not sharing anymore, John. Yeah. Huh? I'm not sharing anymore. You stopped yeah. sharing, yeah. So here at the top of the script, we use the define command. The help about these commands, so these commands or directive that starts with a pound sign are defined. So that's the home page of the documentation. They are defined in the preprocessor help file, but the main stuff is in main help file. And here you have, for example, the section, so the setup section, the file section with all the parameter that you can give. And there's right. a lot of stuff. You can have hours of fun trying to, <laughs> to figure it out. Yeah. But uh, you don't need all this, depending if unless you have very specific needs. Yeah. That so, sounds... John, I'm not I'm not sure how familiar you are with Auto Hockey's built-in tool that does this. But between the two of you guys, what would you say from everything that John just mentioned here? You know, like why would someone use this tool over the built-in stuff we have available in AutoHotKey for creating an install? Like what's some of the most really cool functionality that sets it apart? Well, let me, so before he chimes in with why you would need that or, or why you would prefer that. So there's a few things in AutoHotKey, for example, your script, um, you can set registry keys. Right, but if you want to delete the application, what is going to delete those registry keys later on? Right, you would need another script that would actually uninstall. So that's the reason why, even in the Inu setup, you have these two separate things: the installer and the installer actually creates an uninstaller. So you need two things. In other hotkey, you would have to do that yourself. You would have to not only that's if you say if you take a look at when the uninstaller was created right next to it there was an uninstaller dot that which is kind of like a data file that contains all the commands that the uninstaller has to run right so kind of yeah so all of that you would have to manually do yourself including the gui which is like this step by step process and of course that if you don't want to deal with all that you can just write one file that would take care of all of that. That's that's the that's what I'm understanding from it, because uh, what you mentioned, like, okay, I want to install things in the registry, and I want to install this file in this location, or I want to use this icon instead of that one. All of that, as you mentioned prior, you can do it in Auto Hotkey, but then you would have to do it yourself, right? You you have to manually do that, uh, and it would take a little bit longer than just creating one setup initialization file. And you cannot control where the user will install your application. If it is a zip file, user could unzip your file under a protected folder. For example, many users try to unzip the portable version of Quick Access Pop-Up under the program files folder, which is a protected folder. So something running there cannot write inside this folder. The programs there will write their their data, their any file or things like that. In other locations, other right? software that under directory, for example, under app data or things like that. But the portable version of Quick Access Pop Up will try to write the any file in the same folder where it is. Yeah, and if it is under the the you would need administrator folder, rights. Yeah, or under the C root rights. drive, the C root drive is protected. You cannot an application cannot write an any file itself. So. There are things that you cannot control that the user will do. And if you have a lot of users, it can be a lot of support requests because something does not work. And before right. you find out what's not working, so it's good if you can prevent this by having a software that will really control the way your program so, is. Installed. So what I've heard basically is you have a, a really well-defined template, <laughs> right? Yeah. Is already yeah. built that um, yeah you know, has already taken account yeah. a lot of and when you give support uh, that's that's it, it has a big value because you can assume that the software is installed in the given in way a specific so you can way. ask question to the user check this check this and it should be there right with a portable installation you're never sure what the user will well will uh, have and, done that, and, that, and that's the interesting thing my 
with my understanding of auto hotkey, I would say, yeah, definitely I can. Basically, the reason why you cannot write on the program files folder is because it's restricted. But if you run the script in administrator mode, then you can. That's one way. Or another, instead of writing the ini file right next to the script, always write it to the applications data folder, which is always available or the documentation. Yeah, so but, again, yeah, it's not that it's impossible. Yeah, right. but when you it's write not, a, a portable huh? application, it is done to be portable, so it is done. It is done to be self-contained. Exactly. So, 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 so a that's portable different. application, exactly. should, and it's good for users who need that user that needs to run your application from a USB key and use it on any computer right. in, in without that case, leaving any trace. Right. <laughs> I understand. Support, but in that case, I would just check on that. If I check on that, I would notify the 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 user. Hey, I cannot run this folder just yeah. move it to another one but again but yeah, so i don't understand your you're point right. you can do all this that's what i'm that's what i was going to say this, but for a lot of these things you will search a lot because they are very exactly advanced that's that's basically so it, it, what it, is the 32 bit or 60 bit for a bit is easy because there's a variable that gives you that uh, you have to know it but once you know it it's good but there's a lot more features. Exactly. And, and, and that's exactly the, the, the point. So you can do it in auto hotkey, but that's a lot of work that you have to take yeah. care of. And I which think it's the more installer valuable. would do that for you. That's yeah, it. And I think it's more valuable to put your time in features of your software right. instead of doing something that you will do once because, because after it's installed, the installer is done. You won't touch it for months or for years unless right, exactly. you use one software a month. <laughs> but uh, but um, uh, no, no, I do understand. And that really would say, yeah, use because someone else took care of that. Exactly, I would say is the same as a lot of uh, other situations. Don't reinvent the wheel if you don't have to, right? So if it is if only you... to install a few files because you need an image file and you find install is fine. And I'm using it also to install, for example, the images that will be used as buttons in my application. It's because it's used also in the portable version. But um, but uh, yeah. There's yeah, a, I do understand. And and, and I, that's what I would say. I, I would close with that. So the need for an installer is just basically something that it, you can do everything yourself without a hotkey, but basically the installer takes care of a lot of headaches for you. So instead of actually recreating the wheel in this instance, just go ahead and use it. If you need to install multiple files in multiple locations yeah. and you just need to verify that the install the installation process is always the same for everybody then instead of actually having your script deciding okay if it is windows 95 i have to do this <laughs> you know so yeah i do get the value on that yeah so awesome john yeah that was really interesting it is it's a pretty amazing tool honestly for you know, and and it is easy right because it's it is it's basically a text file the only thing is that then you have to learn a, a few yeah. and, basic and, and things but good, it's, it's not exactly file. a forum it's a kind of or, or it's an old way forum you if you wish but there's a community that can help you if you have questions right and, and the response can come quickly the day after you have the answers to your request for your question awesome awesome all right well thank you john have a good day